Liberation from False Accusation This entry is about false accusation, the structure of false accusation, the feelings of false accusation, and the means to dissolve the sense of being implicated by false accusation. The Structure of False Accusation False accusation consists of two aspects, the feeling of accusation, feelings of fear and bewilderment. It's not necessary for an accusation to have been made against oneself to feel oneself the target of false accusation. One may feel the feelings without any accusation having been made. One may even rake through one's memories to identify some action deserving of accusation and guilt. There may be none. The feelings of false accusation are of free-floating guilt, the counterpart of free-floating anxiety. There is the sense that one may be guilty and worthy of the accusation, even if one has no idea how one might be at fault, just as one may be anxious without any idea of what one is anxious about. That sensation is the feeling of being implicated. The feeling of being implicated without any way to identify how or why is free-floating guilt. It's a sense of vulnerability without recourse. In the case of a false accusation having been made, the knowledge that one is innocent of the accusation is insufficient to dispel the feelings that one is guilty or should be ashamed. One feels that one is somehow guilty if not of the accusation, then of something else deserving accusation. In a sense, one is falsely self-accusing, not in some active deliberate sense, but automatically. False accusation leads to or contains the sense of preordained failure, to the sense of integrity undermined, to disempowerment, to not daring, to being daunted, to self-doubt. Turning the table on a false accuser. If one is oneself a false accuser, perhaps to gain advantage over another as in American politics, or in punishing political protest as in a corrupt governmental power structure, the accuser must suppress conscience perhaps coating it with some rationalized justification, a second layer of suppressed conscience. Thus the false accuser would be justifiably accused, if accused of false accusation. To accuse a false accuser of false accusation causes the feelings of rationalized justification to surface. Diversionary tactics may follow. To dissolve false accusation. To dissolve false accusation, it's necessary to take on and dissolve both the sense of being accused and the feelings of fear and bewilderment. A quick and dirty approach. A quick and dirty approach to false accusation is to do a gold key release on the two aspects I have just identified. One does a gold key release on false accusation and on fear and bewilderment. That addresses both the subjective and the objective representation aspects of false accusation. One without the other is incomplete and may be ineffectual. A better prepared approach. A better prepared approach is to do a tetraced setup procedure on each of the two aspects before doing gold key releases. One may do a most simple driving in the pegs setup as described in the entry on the tetraced setup procedure. That helps to anchor attention better on the two items to set them up as better targets for gold key releases. Better than that is to do the lenses steps on each of the two aspects. That helps to reveal the feelings of the underlying structures of each aspect. Better than that is to do the lasers steps on each of the two aspects. 
that reveals hidden relationships between the false accusation and the feelings triggered by it. One need not know of any specific accusation. The mere use of the term false accusation in the procedure is sufficient. If one has done the driving in the pegs short version of the tetraced setup, one may skip the steps of the driving in the pegs and do only the steps remaining. Still better than that is to do the dilemma buster procedure at each of the laser's steps. The dilemma buster can be found by using the term as a key search term either within this blog or via search engine. Use quotes. Dilemma buster in quotes. Best of all would be to follow with a middle way memory matrix ritual incorporating false accusation and fear and bewilderment. One may do only the simplest preparations or any number of them to all of them. Your experience will show you how they work, and your natural impulse will determine how much you do. Good Grooming Afterwards Having deconstructed this rather influential element of one's sense of self and existence, one's sense of integrity, having been liberated from this toxic condition, has gaps left by the dissolved aspects. There may be many gaps. So there exists another step, reforging one's sense of integrity. The crystal crown procedure is useful in this step. As an adjunct to reinforce the integrity of the change, one may do a run through of the somatic education exercise sequence called the five pointed star. Application. If you have the interest and gumption for it, as I do, you may do the whole thing by yourself. If you feel you need support to take you through it, you may have a Tetra Seed Transformation coach guide you through. If you recognize the influential benefit of doing the procedures in a group, the wind in the sails provided by the somatic contagion of a group, you may do the procedures at a live in-person Tetra Seed Transformation workshop. The psyche of Earth world is full of self-defeating garbage and confusion, even in the most well-meaning of people. People undermine themselves and they undermine others, if only by transmitting their unhandled afflictions in common daily communication. Don't tolerate it. Do a massive cleanup in yourself and liberate yourself progressively from the unhandled unevolved inheritance of previous generations and the mood contagion of commerce and the daily news. Empower yourself by dissolving the undermining force of false accusation in yourself. <laughs>